than uh, some of the other ones, uh, but still on the quirky side, maybe. Picture frame. Remember this guy? This is kind of a practice run I did for a different project. And I kind of put it in a bag, put it aside, knowing someday that I would build a frame for it. Well, today is that day. And what I wanted to do, what I still want to do, I don't know if I'm going to pull it off or not. If you ever seen a spline joint, a spline joint is where a piece of wood goes through the end of this. Not necessarily through this. I don't know what this is called, but this is the look I wanted to do. I wanted to have. I wanted a joint. I want to leave. Have some light colored wood for the frame and have a dark piece of walnut go through. Probably not this long, I'd cut maybe half as, half as long, but I have these things sticking out. So my first, what I tried to do first was to create these, if you can see these dado cuts in there, or grooves, that this thing would fit into. Uh, so, and actually before that, I would cut down these pieces, rip down these in half, Put that groove into both sides and then it would fit right into there and I messed around with that for quite a while and I came to the conclusion that it's just too bleeping hard to do because these things just I mean there's just too many variables if you're off just a little you know a 30 second here and then you try to miter and that's off just a little bit it's just gonna not gonna work very good and I even made this um, jig for these things to slide into, they went right there, and they slid through. They slid through my uh, uh, router table, uh, cutting that groove. But like I said, it's just I don't know. I messed around with it for a few hours, and it's just uh, a couple hours, and it just didn't seem like it was going to work very well. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to. Oh, I've got a mortise maker, mortise um, maker for my uh, drill table or drill press, or uh, yeah, drill press. And I'm gonna try to push a mortise hole through here. I'm gonna build the whole frame, and then I'm gonna try to push a, you know, drive a mortise hole through here uh, with the jig that I made for the um, drill press. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but first, I need to make the frame. So I'm going to make the frame, I'm probably just going to use biscuit joints to hold it together temporarily until that spline is in. And then, yeah, then we'll push that mortise through and, and we will do it that way. Um, I, did, I thought I had some maple, but I don't, and I don't want to go buy any. So I have this piece of uh, aspen sitting on my shelf, kind of like pine and soft, probably better to work with anyway. Although it might tear out easier, I don't know. but. So we're going to do this aspen. It's pretty yellow right now, but I think once I sand it, it'll get a little more white. And it'll contrast that walnut pretty well. So now's the time if you want to ask me how my aspen, how's my aspen? It's a running joke. I used to have one aspen car, and that was kind of a running joke, so I apologize for that. <laughs> Alright, let's make the frame. I'm going to cut these in two inch wide pieces, put a miter in, put some biscuits in, and put together a frame. Oh, I'm going to run it through a dado, so uh, I'm going to cut that groove out there so the picture frame fits in there solid. Uh, pretty basic frame making for starters. Someday, I need to bring up a better air system, I know. But that's what I got for now. To give you an idea of what I was doing the last time, this is the jig I had. These pieces fit into here like so, and I left this open. So I 
could shove them in there like so. And then I actually taped them. I clamped them and taped them. Clamped them here and taped them on the back to kind of hold everything tight. Then I would slide them through, um, slide them through this. Uh, I had this fence pulled that way, so and I'd slide it over the blade and create these two, create those two little grooves, but yeah, I just wasn't feeling the love on that. I, was, I wasn't confident that it was gonna work. Not that I'm confident that this is gonna work, but I've set this table up to cut a dado on the side, or a rabbit, or whatever the hell they're called, uh, right here, so the pitcher frame will go down. I'm gonna do it in two passes so we don't get a bunch of tear out. For some reason, I was getting, I'm getting a lot of tear out right there. And I don't know why, and I don't like it, but I think it actually does kind of show up a little bit. So you know what I might do? I think I might run these through the table saw one more time and just shave a little bit off, maybe a sixteenth off, and clean that edge up. I gotta figure out how big the frame's gonna be. So I'll put those guys together. Put this in here. Um, I'll pull it out a little bit. There's no reason to have it too tight. And so this is gonna be like. Quarters, the long end, 24 and 3 quarters. I think if I turn it this way, it should be pretty square. Yeah, I think we're good. Just a touch small, not a big deal. Kind of cut down the cut down the image or the uh, the picture slash artwork slash whatever it is to size. Which a lot of times that's not an option. Uh, yeah, I think that'll work. Looks like there's a maybe an eighth inch. Probably could have been a little smaller. There's probably an eighth inch in between, but that's still giving me three sixteenths maybe. It's to sit on. That'll work. All right, now I'm gonna put some biscuits in and glue it up. All right, little glue and biscuits. All right, 
So check out this thing. I don't do a lot of frames, but when I do, this thing sometimes comes in handy. Okay, it's uh, left to sit overnight. Probably didn't have to let it sit that long, but I did. Just worked out that way. Let's see how it turned out. I'm pretty sure it turned out fine. It's pretty flat. Uh, my ears are pretty darn tight. A little bit looser on the, and they're okay. A little bit looser on the bottom, but it's, I don't care about the bottom. Hopefully they're just tight enough to go through this uh, making the tenons uh, or the making the mortise, which I'm going to do right now. All right, so here's what we're after. A tenon right there, or a mortise cut right there that a tenon will fit through. In order to do that, I made this funky uh, rig right here. Uh, 45 angle, this is a, a mortise cutter and yeah it works okay it's a little dicey but uh i've done two of them and two more to go and actually when I'm, i gotta be careful because when i cut this out that's where the biscuit is right there so there's not a hell of a lot of glue holding this thing in place so we'll see what happens So I got that right there, and that right there, and then in between I'm just going to kind of freehand it. Right there. Rink. Rink. Okay, just gotta do it to one more. All the holes are done. Now I'm just gonna clean them up. They're pretty rough inside there, so I'm going to, I got a little piece of sandpaper on a stick, if you will. And then we're just going to kind of clean them up a little bit. Pressure on one side or the other. Try not to seesaw too much. I don't want to round round the corners off. I want a gap that way. That'll be a little gap, but I can live with that. Mission accomplished. I cut these walnut, not maple, walnut tenons down. So they fit pretty good in there, pretty tight. It's not perfect, but that's okay. I'm not all about perfect. They're decent. Um, now I'm going to do my favorite job and sand this. Sand this frame. I've already sanded these. I had to kind of, I cut them close and then I sanded them to get a, you know, kept working my way down until they fit in. So these have already been sanded. I started with 80, 
Start with 80, go to what, 100 I believe. So 80 to 100 down to 120. Or no, no, 80 to 120 to 220. That's what I'm doing. Yay, sanding. Four of them, they're each seven and a half inches long, so they, they stick out about three inches or so. The problem I had was I'm going to you know put these things through here, right? Oh, that one's pretty loose. Um, but I need to put glue in there, and I didn't want to put glue in there, shove this through, and have glue stick to this and make the finish all crappy. So what I did was, or what I'm going to do, well, what I did was, I stuck them in here, put them where they are supposed to be, each one, and very lightly marked them in pencil. And if it was too dark, I, I sanded it off a little bit so you can just barely see it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to finish, put one coat on the edge of this, uh, on the front side and the edges, and I'm going to finish just the ends where the part sticks out and leave the middle where the, the part that goes inside, leave that blank or with no finish on it. And then when I slide this through, it's gonna get all gluey, but I can wipe the glue off, spray it off with water, and it shouldn't affect the finish so much. So that's the plan. All right, everything's dried up. Time to time to glue it up. See what happens. I should probably put a pin in the back of them. I think I will do that. All right, I got a 23 gauge, 23? Yeah, I think it's 23 gauge pinner. Shoots a shoot, super small, tiny pin, you can hardly see it. Uh, of course, I'm still shooting to the back, but yeah, so I'll hold it in place. Three and a quarter is what I figured. That's right on the money. Okay, the glue has dried. I sanded uh, the first coat down 
and it worked pretty well. The glue did not stick to any parts of the, uh, the tendons. Now I'm going to just put one more coat of finish on the back, put another coat on the front, and maybe one more coat after that in the front. And then we're done. Well, we got to mount the, mount the uh, picture in the frame, I guess, or the painting, or whatever you call it. Finish is dry. Some of these joints look better than the others. Some of them kind of got oh, healthy size gaps in them. So I orientated, if that's a word, the side that looks best from here, uh, hiding the gaps at the top and the bottom, most of them. So this is the top, and I figured that this is the top of this, obviously, it should be obvious to everybody that that is the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in place, and well, first I'm going to put a little, uh, I'm just going to use, I'm going to hold it in place with a little hot glue. And I'm just going to dab some in the corners and put this thing down, and then I'll kind of dab around the edges a little bit. Um, I don't want to go crazy and put it in here. I don't want it oozing out. So that's the plan. And this thing's not perfectly straight, so I got some weight to kind of keep, keep it down in the corner. Once the glue dries, it ain't going anywhere. I guarantee that. So, a couple dabs will do ya. I like it. It would be too. I think it would be a little too light if I didn't have these. I think that helps. And also depends on what's really going to make or break this is what the color of the wall that goes behind. I'll probably just set it in my living room and set it in different rooms and see if anything jumps out at me. So I made a couple spots right here for the screws to hold on to the wire that will keep it on the wall. And we're golden. There we go. Time to find a wall to put it on. Funky frame in its final resting place. Well, temporary maybe, or temporary resting place. I'm not really crazy about the color in the background. It's a little not enough contrast for me. I think like a dark gray would look better, like in my office, but I already have its sister in my office, so that's not going to happen. Uh, overall, I like the way it, it turned out. I like the contrast. The gaps are probably a little bigger than I wish they were, but I think only a true woodworker would notice that. If I had to do things over, I probably would have sprung for 10 bucks worth of maple. I don't, it would have been nicer if it was just, you know, almost grain-free white wood. Um, and then this, these would have contrast a little bit more. But this isn't the perfect space for it, but it's almost, I almost like to give it to somebody, but it's one of those gifts where you might get raised eyebrow and somebody say like, uh, yeah, thanks for that. So it'll probably live here, it'll eventually be moved, but 
overall it turned out pretty good, I thought. 